In the year 1760, James Watt developed the steam engine. Watt developed the steam engine to take water out of deep coal mines. This invention was not adapted to other purposes very quickly. Notice how large this machine was. But by the mid-1830s, modifications brought it as the major source to power the mills in Great Britain instead of water. Now factories could be anywhere, especially areas that had abundant labor, such as cities. America still relied upon water for the majority of its mills, whereas Britain's cities were very dirty to all of the coal fueling the steam engines. The need for energy spurred coal consumption, and many of these urban poor were forced to locate their families near mines, creating generations of cheap labor. You would also have iron versus steel. Steel is cheaper and more durable. Henry Bessemer converted pig iron into steel. Steel is lighter and stronger than iron. The steam engine was adapted to transportation. Railroads were invented and soon supplanted canals. This led to the decline in the amount of time needed to travel long distances. Communication increased with the telegraph. In 1866, the first transatlantic cable from New York to London was operating for instant communication. This can also be adapted to military technology. No longer are you using wind. Therefore, iron steamships would develop around 1861 and could cross the Atlantic Ocean much faster. Small mills did not require major investments and the profits were huge. These profits would go into banks who then in turn would lend money to others. To build a railroad, companies were formed. Britain led the way with financial reform by developing corporations in 1844. Investors would only lose the shares or the money they had invested into a corporation rather than losing everything that they had owned in case of financial disaster. This idea of limited liability allowed for the wealthy to be a bit more risky with their money and they invested more. Regarding societal changes, before 1800 only 10% of Europeans lived in cities. 20% of the British lived in cities because of its early industrial revolution. By 1850, 52% of English, 25% of the French, and 36% of Germans would live in cities, but only 7% for Russia. The reason for Russia, as stated before, they had the serfs. The serfs were tied to the landlords. The composition of the cities changed as well. The center of the city would become the industrial area. Unhealthy conditions and the poor laborers lived in or near this area so they could commute to work. The wealthier left the center and moved to its edges to have larger homes. Trolleys were developed for mass transport to and from the center. The middle class, dependent on trade, banking, and manufacture, started to see a rise, the so-called rise of the bourgeoisie. They soon displaced the olded landed aristocracy. These middle class families often had urban servants or maids to do the domestic chores for the family. The proletariat or urban working class were generally worked for lower wages due to overpopulation. Supply of too many people to the labor force meant low wages. A good book to read would be Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, typifying the life of working immigrants and the Chicago meatpacking industry. Eventually unions would rise trying to create a common voice for workers. Typically governments support big business and often acted against violent strikes. As a society progresses, reform is always necessary. Citizens became concerned by the long hours forced upon women and children. In 1802, the Parliament passed the English Factory Acts, which limited hours for women and children in mines and factories. Children also were required to go to school for two hours a day, although the state did not have a centralized school system as Napoleon had created in France. In 1847, Parliament passes the Ten Hours Act. Women and children could only work a maximum of 10 hours a day, although for males this was not instituted until 1874. While Britain focused on big business and laissez-faire, the countries on the continent adopted more socialist policies where the government regulated big business to help the disadvantaged. Charles Dickens' famous novel, Oliver, portrayed the stereotype as poor, begging, and starving. 
Historians have reevaluated that role. Standards of living did rise, and the poor would save their money. The old adage of working hard so their children could have a better future. So it would be a slow evolutionary process of industrialization, which actually still continues today. While the United States and many large countries have passed these laws, many areas around the world in Africa, East Asia, have not. So we are always trying to reform capitalism.